And now, this is where things get very real once again. Gabriel Nassif, one of the best players ever to play Magic, is sitting across from David. And as it turns out, they're both on Jun Sacrifice as well. So David's going to find find himself in a mirror match of sorts. This is Gabe coming off of a victory over Luis in their quarterfinal match. This one should be good. That's what I think. Now, here's what I'll say, Marshall, as we're seeing the cultural familiar be played here on turn number one. Uh, I mean, maybe some minor land concerns here for Steinberg because we don't have land number three yet. Ideally, Trail of Crumbs will get us there. But importantly, um, for me, Steinberg's deck is built with the mirror in mind. with regards to both Trail of Crumbs and the number of copies of Corval in the deck. And not to mention, as we're seeing here in his hand, though he's missing that third land drop, currently two copies of Mayhem Devil at the ready. So there's a lot to like about his hand as well as his build of the deck. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because looking at Gabriel Nassif here, he also doesn't have Collected Company, at least not in his hand yet. And uh, that is going to be one of the ways that he can get ahead over Steinberg. Steinberg staring down at these two copies of Mayhem Devil really hoping to be able to hit a bunch of lands in a row here to start deploying those, the Frasca, and yes, even Corvold in the main deck there to get the job done. As it stands for Gabriel Nassif, he's going to fire off Priest of the Forgotten Gods and into Midnight Reaper, deciding if he wants to allow David to get this cat into the graveyard here with an attack with the Priest. And he decides against it and passes the turn back to Steinberg. Is there lands? There is a Witch's Oven. So there's not a land, but this is not a bad situation so far as you get to sacrifice the cat, you get a food token, you bring the cat back, you pay one for Trail of Crumbs, you ideally find land number three there, and maybe that can bridge you to land four, and you can really start to catch up a little bit here in this game. And he does, he finds Phyrexian Tower, at least on raw power level, the most powerful land in his deck, as it can produce two mana and is a sacrifice outlet that can be very difficult to interrupt. So this could be very good for him. In fact, with another land, we could even see Corvold come yep. down next turn. I got to feel like that would be a, a big handful here for Gabriel Nassif, who finds his own copy of Phyrexian Tower off the top of the library. Hmm. Well, options here for Nassif. You mentioned the tower. We do have a sacrifice outlet, but you know, you're not gonna claim a cauldron familiar. That's you know, and also there's a Phyrexian Tower staring back at you, so that's not great. Wolf right. Rider is okay, Midnight Reaper also just kind of okay. So nothing standing out here for Nassif that is like awesome, I guess I would say. Yeah, I wonder how much he's gonna prioritize activating that priest of the forgotten gods this turn. You know, he has a few different options on what he wants to do if he'd like to, but that would be very nice for him as far as cards go with a Midnight Reaper out, plus just the natural ability of the Priest. He could get quite a few cards here. Okay, here comes Woe Strider on the battlefield with Goat Friend in tow. Yep. I guess maybe, uh, well, I mean, it's not... Doesn't feel like there's a great attack here for Nassif, right? Because Culture Familiar is just going to block whatever and it can come back via the food token. Um, and that's actually the thing that I think, yeah, David would want to have happen anyway, because you block your Culture Familiar dies, then you sacrifice the food token, which triggers the Trail of Crumbs, you pay with the, with the tower. So easy enough to say no attacks, continue to build my battlefield up here if you're, uh, if you're Nassif. Castle Lockthwain off the top of the library here for David Steinberg means that if he'd like... He could cast Corvold. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so we can go the Corvold route, as you mentioned. We can, well, we know, you and I, what the Mayhem Devil route looks like. O that's oftentimes, a, that's a, these are good choices. <laughs> oftentimes looks good. Uh, and then there's the there's the Vraska route, which is a little less enticing. I feel like that Vraska is probably going to be saved to kill an opposing Mayhem Devil if it shows up. And that then would I definitely make sense. And I don't think you need the other trail of crumbs, so it, it feels like either a devil or a or a Corvald turn. Though I don't know if you really need to jam all the way into Corvald this turn. So I'm curious to see what Steinberg wants to do on this turn. Alright, looks like it's gonna be the very powerful Mayhem Devil. Yeah, our card of the tournament, at least as far as Cedric and I are concerned, Mayhem Devil on the stack here. Gabriel Nassif finds himself way behind in the match now. 
as Mayhem Devil, very threatening. We see Priest of the Forgotten God's activation. There's going to be a lot riding on the cards that he gets out of that because if he can't do something quite impressive next turn, it's going to be tough to come back given what we know about the hand of David Steinberg at this point. Damn, here, let's, uh, let's start going to work on some of these creatures on the opposing side of the battlefield. So this is the window to activate the Priest, right? No, the cat can still just come yep. back, can't it? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Darn it, there is not going to be a window now with a second food yep. on the battlefield as well. You've nailed it. You've nailed it. You've noticed it. And this is this is a great, great turn here for David. Um, so now there goes the priest. And see if he even knows it. He's not going to activate. He's not going to do anything, you know, because he just can't. There's no window. So now the cat comes back. You get your trigger, uh, and you're kind of off to the races. And remember, Marshall, that because Phyrexian Tower is untapped, you have the ability to sacrifice the cat to that and get back get it back again with the food token so um mayhem devil is doing mayhem devil things folks starting to take over that's right and you know what it's not going to get better from here if you're sitting in gabriel nasif's seat because there's not only another mayhem devil in hand for steinberg but also corvold and there's even a vraska there too so a couple of lands there for gabe nasif not what he wanted to see now he does have claim the firstborn plus witches of an and or woe strider so he has the ability to get this mayhem devil off the battlefield and that is going to be a relief for him because Mayhem Devil, as we saw, already did pretty good work there for David. But that's only step one, given what we know about Steinberg's hand. Yeah, and that's the thing that Nassif does not know, is he does not know what's going on in Steinberg's hand. So if you're Nassif, you're probably feeling as though, you know what, this feels like a little bit of a win. I've taken care of a Mayhem Devil, going to do a little scrying, you know, all this other jazz he's got going on in the battlefield. But in reality, we know that Steinberg's hand is pretty loaded up uh, with another copy of Mayhem Devil and, of course, the incredibly powerful Corval Fake Curse King. Puts that card on the bottom. That was the, the goat getting targeted and then sacrificed to Strider. Now this is going to unlock an attack, though, for Gabe to see if he's going to send in for six to knock David down to 13. And then it looks like his options are cast Midnight Reaper or pay for Gigantha. And it's going to be a Reaper. And a Stomping Ground and a Go. And now the shields are well and truly down here for Gabe to see if he has nothing going on in hand, just a land left over, which is oven, woe strider, and a pair of reapers on the battlefield. But Steinberg has mana to spend, and boy, does he have some places to spend it as well. Uh, I would say it's party time here for Steinberg. Now, of course, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves, but you got an opponent who's tapped out and not very much going on, and only one card left in hand. I I'd be thinking to myself, hey, Let's get this dragon established. What's the worst that can happen in game one? The answer is not really anything. So here comes Corvold, do a little sacrifice action, so and so forth. And, and as we have seen so many times with this card, not only this weekend, but in past tournaments, if you have the opportunity to untap with Corvold, the game almost certainly ends that turn for the opponent. Yeah, even when your opponent's sitting at 14 life, it's not hard to imagine at all that Corvold could get the job done next turn. Yeah, it's it's... I don't want to say it's trivial, but it's pretty darn easy. Uh, yeah. And you see the battlefield that's out here right now for Steinberg. I mean, it's going to be really easy for it to go up to, I don't know, seven, eight, nine. I mean, can, it, can we get the full 14 across in combination with Mayhem Devil? Almost certainly. I, I bet yes. Uh, I'm not going to go through all that until we're at that point, but my guess would be absolutely. As uh, we've seen it time and time again, Corvold has the ability to close out games like few cards in the format, but this is the hard part. You need to resolve and untap with Corvold to get that going, and that's exactly what's happened here. Right now, no answer in sight for Nasif as this Corvold is hanging around on the battlefield, and it looks like that's where it's going to stay. Nasif is going to play Lovestruck Beast as a 5-5. Five -five. Yeah, but that one... That one is going to draw cards. It's a, it's a little bit worse than our friend Corvold. That's right. It looks like Nasif is going to sacrifice perhaps the beast and draw a bunch of cards off of the Reaper. But uh, this is, or the Reapers, I should say. But this is, uh, this is not going to end well for him as he needs more mana than he currently has available to really affect things. Oh, he does have a land drop to give here. And he has a tower. Is Eclected Company, is there anything you can hit? No, right? Yeah, All right, well, he played but, the tap land anyway. Well, that answer, yeah, that answers that question, so we don't have to right. worry about it. There you go. Also worth noting right now, too, that the Midnight Reapers are actually going to bring down the Seaf's life total, too. Yes, cards yes. are nice. And, and let's not forget that, you know, you can work itself into the equation of sacrifice 
sacrificing one of these creatures for a food token to gain a little bit of life. You're gonna lose. You're gonna lose some life um, with the sacrificing of a creature because of the reapers, and then gain some life back. Blah blah blah. End of the day, uh, I think we're about to see Corval come across the finish line here, folks. As chat points out as well, uh, Nasif, no access to green mana there to even try for the collected company, and that's even assuming that there was something that he could hit off of it. Yep. And there it is, the one-two punch, Mayhem Devil and Corvold Fake Curse King. Nobody survives this combination, especially when you throw in the Cat Oven combo in there as well. And uh, this is just going to be the last of it here for David Steinberg to just go through the motions. Look at all those triggers on the stack. And all Gabriel Nassif can do is look on from his home in France as uh, his life total plummets. Yeah, it's about time to get ready here for game number two. And that's why if I if, if you had asked me, Marshall, who I think was going to win this match coming into it, I would have picked Steinberg. And it's got nothing to do with the fact that, that Nassif isn't great. We all know that he is. If I'm just taking a look at deck list to deck list, and I'm assuming that Steinberg knows how to play his deck incredibly well, and why would I assume otherwise, given that he's in the top four of this tournament? Then deck list to deck list, give me Steinberg here. Trail of Crumbs was awesome in that game. And, well, we just saw what Corvold could do. Yeah, that was the huge decision that Steinberg and company made there when they decided not to play, admittedly, his favorite card or one of his favorite cards collected company uh, in their Jun sacrifice list. And that has really paid off for David here as his list looks a little like the standard version that we have or have had uh, for the past you know year and a half or whatever, where it is more based on Trail of Crumbs, Cat Oven, Mayhem Devil, and then a Corvold. It has a different feel to it, and it approaches this matchup in a much different way, and it seems to be effective against the Collective Company builds, at least from what we've seen. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, could, not argue, I could not argue otherwise. I, mean, I, I, just, oh, I just think that Steinberg is in such a good spot right now. I really, really, really do. As far as the mirror is concerned, I think he made some sacrifices in some other places and some other matchups. But for the mirror with these core vaults, and you see like Nassif is going to be bringing in his own core vault potentially here because his are hiding out in the sideboard. Uh, and doesn't really have anything that's great against Trail of Crumbs. Uh, and Trail of Crumbs does such a nice job of helping you find what you're looking for. I just love Steinberg's spot here, assuming that his deck cooperates. Well, let's see what happens. Can David Steinberg continue on? <laughs> and really, this incredible run by him, uh, marching his way all the way through the top eight through a very tough field. This is an invitational tournament. These are Everybody in this field has uh, some accomplishments under their belt. And David getting his way in here to the top eight. And boy, I have been really impressed by his play. He's very careful. He makes sure that he knows exactly what's going on. And he's taken on one of the harder decks to play. Now, he is going to mulligan to six here, said. So not the perfect start. He has Gilded Goose, Witches of, and Liliana's Defeat, and three lands. Not the perfect start, like you did mention, but a good hand and some early plays. You know, all these all these cards do cost one mana, and there's some, uh, there's some appeal in that. Uh, and Gilded Goose is a great place to start. Now... Naturally, he's going to need some draw steps to kind of cooperate here. You can say a little bit of the same here for Nassif. I like Nassif's starting hand a little bit better, though, again, these shelter thickets, they do they do pain me a little bit here, uh, given the fact that they do enter the battlefield tap. But Nassif doesn't really have very much to do on turn two here anyway, so not that big of a deal. Ah, uh, you got to get in there with that cat, Nassif. 1-1 one, one and 0-2. Oh, Come on, buddy. <laughs> Teach him a lesson. I like sending the signal too. Absolutely. Hey, that's a nice one there. A mayhem uh, double off the it, top. It always is. Now, do you want to play it now when you can't do much with it, or would you rather leave with Midnight Reaper? My lean, and we have seen other players do this, is to sandbag the mayhem right. devil for its best possible situation where you can get value from it right away. And that's what we're seeing here, which is lead with the Reaper, sandbag the devil, probably play Collective Company next turn, hopefully find a Woe Strider or something similar, and then deploy the mayhem devil and uh i guess this is a pun this is louisa's thing creates some mayhem did i do it right did i do the pun yes, right okay you did it you did the pun thing and i don't know why this follows me everywhere i go in my life <laughs> <laughs> i thought i was safe with you you know uh you know what i'll, I'll say that you mostly are because i'm just that's not my area of expertise at all at all i thought so. we were in the trust tree i thought i could say what i needed to say this wasn't gonna happen but <laughs> <laughs> Luis got to you too, I guess. Here comes Mayhem Devil alongside the Witch's Oven now as uh, we saw Liliana's defeat take care of the Midnight Reaper there uh, to get it off the battlefield. And that means now that Gabriel Nassif he says, well, all right, well, I've got enough here. I'm going to go for it because I can get rid of this Gilded Goose. 
Yeah, I think, I, I, so I like this because now you got your Sacrifice Engine online. We just saw this on the other side of the battlefield last game, and we've been seeing it throughout all three days of this tournament thus far, which is Oven, Cat, Mayhem, Devil. You start to shoot some things down, and you can take a look at Steinberg's hand. That's incredibly, incredibly weak. So step one for him now is I got to find an answer to this Mayhem Devil. If I get that off of the battlefield, life is going to be pretty good for me. Uh, at least it's a step in the right direction. But in the interim, uh, we'll see if this e what's in both players hands so it's easy for us to say do this do that um but if you're in Nasif's seat and you know that your opponent has two cards at hand and access to their their colors of mana there's a wide range of cards they could have so is it worth it to kill the, good, the gilded goose maybe yes maybe no but uh, you can make an argument on both sides of yeah you should definitely kill this thing now or don't kill it and save it for later ultimately yeah. Nasif did decide to kill the goose so it's off of the battlefield now Steinberg's draw step was pretty inconsequential with that which is oven and now we move on back to Nasif. Yeah, this is getting interesting now because now it's collected company time here for Gabriel Nassif. He needs to decide when to deploy it, but that could be the type of card that could put him far enough ahead given that Steinberg's draw has been pretty anemic. We haven't really seen a whole lot from him. And if uh, if Nassif can really kind of power out a couple of real big hitters, even just two three drops off of it, he could put himself in a position where Steinberg really needs to draw a card like next turn or could find himself too far behind. You see the Cauldron Familiar come back into play, chump lock the Mayhem Devil, but one of the damage is going to get through anyway, thanks to sacrificing it to the Witch's Oven, and uh, the Cauldron Familiar, the other Cauldron Familiar is going to get into the red zone. Play a land tapped and pass, and Steinberg's going to be keenly aware of the fact that there is a collected company possibility that's very high coming from the Seif. No. What was the draw there? It was a, a claim? Okay. Okay, that's a good place to start. It is. Here comes Collected Company, though, in response from Gabriel Nassif, and he finds Midnight Reaper, not too bad, and a Rex Age can take out one of the ovens on the other side, so not the worst. I, this, I don't think those are the cards that say, well, I win this game no matter what, but he's still way ahead. Which is oven's going to eat up the Mayhem Devil here. in response to the uh claim get yourself a card from the re from the reaper right gotta get that and that card matters a lot here um you see that both players are effectively out of gas two lands in hand for nasif one land in hand for steinberg you know the first one to draw something really great if it's in steinberg's hands he could try to back and if it ends up being in the thief's hands he could shut the door on this game yep it's totally another agree. lando for him and, and acclaim the firstborn with no targets wow yeah. All right, so we got some turns to play here. And he doesn't have a lot going on, as you mentioned. Yes. He's he's got cat, but you know he does have cat oven going, and he has a reaper on the battlefield. So I'm going to say that he's got more going on than it initially appears. Yeah, he he certainly is the one with the upper hand here with this card draw engine, with the cat, the oven, and the midnight reaper. He just needs to find the cards to finish the game now, and hope that David Steinberg doesn't find his Corvold or something and start going off. And it looks like. He's one step better. He did find a Priest of the Forgotten Gods. And he also, remember, has that Sheltered Thicket that he could cycle. He's going to do it right now to find yet another card. So Nassif, well, if you snapshot the game, he's in good position. It's even looking better down the road for him as Steinberg has nothing going on right now outside of a cat in an oven. But the nice thing about the cat in the oven, it buys a lot of time. It does. It buys a lot of time. All right, it's going to chump lock the Midnight Reaper here to prevent Nassif from getting an extra card by blocking the, one of the other two creatures. 
Here comes Priest of the Forgotten Gods, though. Boy, that plus claim the Firstborn at the ready. That is going to be really tough for Steinberg. He is going to need to string together multiple things here, most likely. And it's going to start with this next draw step. If he whiffs on this, it's, it's going to be over at that point. Yeah, I mean, you can buy yourself some time with regards to sacking food tokens to gain life and everything, but the insurmountable advantage mm -hmm. of Midnight Reaper might be too much. Now, that said, mm -hmm. I do think that was uh, the old perfect, as it were. That is what you want to see right there. Hey, if it's not going to be Corval, at least give me a Mayhem Devil, and that's exactly what Steinberg has found. Now what is the question? Because if you look over at the board for Nassif, it's kind of misleading. On one hand, you think, oh, man. You could destroy that board with this Mayhem Devil, but you really need to kill that Reaper first because otherwise Nassif's just going to reload his hand with all the extra cards and you're not really going to get anywhere. Boy, Act of Treason as well. Okay. So it looks like the Devil's going to hit the battlefield here and then basically... Steinberg's going to be forced to use anything he can do to get that Reaper off the battlefield and then just pray that his Mayhem Devil survives, and it won't. That That is not going to happen. With Claim the Firstborn and Act of Treason in hand for Nassif, he does have that base covered. Man, that really just wants to try to bring it all the way back I, I i i just as much fun as it would be to see it yeah this is the problem and, and nasif is calmly and confidently saying all right here's my one red mana removal spell i'm going to start here and then of course you'll respond and then i'll be able to keep moseying on along boy that midnight reaper has been fantastic it has absolutely been the difference for gabriel nasif and you can just take a look at the hands He's got four cards in hand, and by the way, he's, get, he's about to get another one, and Steinberg's on nothing. And that has been the reason why is Midnight Reaper really carrying its weight here. And it looks like Steinberg is going to prioritize the Priest of the Forgotten Gods rather than the Reaper. So yes, that might be more effective in the immediate sense, but boy, that Reaper is just going to get another card now and then mm -hmm. another one down the line minimum. And it's starting to feel like there's no way out here for Steinberg, just given the amount of advantage that... Nassif can accrue here all off of Midnight Reaper. Yeah, I think the walls have just closed in on this game. You know, Reaper yeah. has done a great job this game of just being able to allow Gabe to kind of, I would say, cement and further snowball his advantage on the game. Uh, and then cap plus up in, you know, a little ding here, a little ding there, another card, so on and so forth. Not losing yourself any life because as we see Marshall, Nassif is sitting at a very healthy 14 right now. So even a timely top deck Mayhem Devil, still not good enough here for Steinberg. No, and it looks like Nassif is, isn't going to stop there. He's going to activate the priest in response as well to this second trigger, and that's going to reload his hand to the tune of three more cards here. Oh, boy. A couple of Reaper cards. Get one from the... Priest of the Forgotten, Priest of Forgotten Gods, and look at that, another familiar, another collected company, and another, or I should say, a Woe Strider. That is gonna be way too much for David to try to overcome. And look at this, before it's gone, Nassif says, maybe I could hit another Reaper and get more cards. Nah, I've got enough to win the game. I'll just draw second Witch's Oven here into hand. And that was all just to get rid of the, uh, the Mayhem Devil on the other side. But as you can see, that transaction, ended up being David loses Devil, Nassif loses Claim, and draws four cards. Did not work out well for David Steinberg. But no. Not like he had not. a lot of options there anyway. Yeah, of course. You know, he's the one without the cards. He doesn't have Midnight Reaper going like Nassif does. You're seeing Cat of an activation drawing cards. You know, Nassif is flooding right now, but his advantage is so great that it simply does not matter. That's right. And he's going to run out of Woe Strider here. He has Cat Oven. He's going to pay for Gigant. Oh, yeah, sure. the big fella. Sure. There Another we go. One. And there's a Witch's Oven, and that surely will be the end here uh, for David Steinberg in game number two. He's going to play it out. I respect it. But, uh, yeah, his chance of actually winning this game has plummeted based on the last couple of turns. And uh, Gabriel Nassif riding that. Midnight Reaper, that thing has reloaded his hand incredibly over the course of this game and left him in a fantastic position here now he's going to have to start discarding the hand size somehow like that's where we're at 
That's how you know life's good. Another copy of Collected Company. Sure. We're going to see Calder Familiar hit before a potential <laughs> Mayhem Devil can come down. In fact, David's going to go ahead and cycle through this cat a couple of times. All those triggers, all those triggers. Get that kitty cat back. Little drain, little gain. 9 to 10 right now in favor of Nassif. But if you're just looking at the life totals, you can see that Nassif has a much more sizable advantage than that. And this collective company is probably going to yield something pretty juicy, I have to imagine. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah, that'll work. A couple of more cats, in yep. fact. It's funny, too, because in a spot like this, you might think, wow, we're active treating this. I like it. I like <laughs> you don't that. see that every that's, day. <laughs> that's proper aggression right there. <laughs> you might think to yourself, how good is it to actually reveal two cauldron village to collected company uh, when your ceiling is so much higher than that with Mayhem Devils and Priests and Midnight Reapers and everything. But, hey, if that's what the situation calls for and that's what's there, that'll work just fine. And these yeah. two Cauldron Familiars look just good to me. Yep, it's a perfectly lethal attack as it stands. Three, six, seven, and eight. Only food tokens can get in the way, but as you can see, there are witches' ovens aplenty on the side here for Gabriel and the Sieve to be able to finish the job in timely fashion. That's, I think that's the most cats I've ever seen on one side of the battlefield here for any yeah, of these sacrifice decks ever. Looks like my grandma's kitchen at feeding time there. Oh, boy. Bunch of cats showing up. <laughs> yeah, more cards hitting the hand here, too, because, hey, why not? Now, it is important to note here, all kidding aside, as Nassif's going to play that Overgrown 2 and pass the turn back, it is important to note that while Nassif is going to win this game, and I don't think this is going to work itself into the equation, Marshall, mm -hmm. but, you know, t time is a thing, um, and, you know, you just want to get the game over with. And, and also, showing that Act of Treason is a thing. Now, don't forget that these players are playing with open deck lists, and so it's not really going to surprise, I think, Steinberg, uh, that Act of Treason is in the deck. But it, it, I will say this, in that game that we watched Nassif play against Luis last round, he tried to bluff an act of treason that wasn't in his deck. And, and so that act of treason is in his deck after sideboard for Steinberg. Does it change his behavior a little bit? Maybe. I mean, he knows for sure there's at least one after sideboard that he has to worry about. Yeah, that's the name of the game. All the valuable information that you can possibly glean, it may end up mattering down the line. Players are uh, now going to sideboards here once again and trying to figure out what to do. Now that's a that it, for me that's a quick submit there from the sieve. Yeah, it looks like he we already had his ma his mind made up. We weren't in the tank too long there. He's got a configuration that he appears to be happy with. So I'm looking forward to a good game number three. Winner moving on. This, we're missing a sack out. Well, no, we have a sack out in in Wostrider. It's a little slow because of the check lands, but I don't know if I'm the sieve. I probably keep him. Steinberg. I'm not sure I would. Yeah, if I'm if I'm Gab, I gotta draw my third land. I'm not sure which three mana spell I want to play to lead off with, but I have a sacrifice outlet in Woe Strider. I've got Cauldron Familiar. I don't have the oven yet. I've got Midnight Reaper as part of the engine, and I have two devils. If I'm Steinberg, I do have a sacrifice engine in Phyrexian Tower. The cats don't okay. look great on their own without the oven really going. Uh, and and I'm also missing green mana. So we saw David take some mulligans last round uh, that I thought were good. Is this one of those situations? I think he's capable of better than this hand. Boy, this is tough. Staring down this hand for game number three against Gabriel Nassif here. A lot on the line for these players trying to push on through. Ugh, that hand just, it really needs some help. If you're looking down at Gabriel Nassif's hand, Looks wow. Like he shipped it back. Okay. See, because the Steve's hand is like a little slow out, off the jump because of the check lands, but to me, I was just kind of looking at it as if he draws a third land, I think he's going to be okay, assuming it enters the battlefield untapped because he can start with Reaper or a bevy of other things if he draws his third land. Uh, he is missing some crucial pieces to things, uh, so I can understand why he sent it back. 
you know, this one's this one's all right. At, at this stage, he is missing a sack outlet for the claims. So I do have concerns about that. Um, but we're underway. Boy, I... Yeah, I just glanced down at Nassif's hand and thought that looks totally fine to me, although I didn't really inspect it that much. Oh, this wasn't bad, though. To, <laughs> nice little witch's oven to go with the two claimed claim the firstborns that uh, Nassif has. Yeah, that's, I mean, both, that's a heck of a draw set for Nassif. Yeah, both of them with sacrifice outlets at the ready. You see the Phyrexian Tower in hand for Steinberg to go with his copies of Claim the Firstborn. Four of them drawn between our two players, two apiece. I mean, these are, these are uh, like, ideal draw steps here for Nassif. He drew, he drew Oven into Cat, and, and so now we've got, like, the, the blocking, the ability to blunt the attacks with regards to just the damage going back and forth to the life gain and everything. I mean, that's, that's... <laughs> That's like perfect perfects here from the sea. Really Jeez. is. When, when have you said that before? <laughs> yeah, was it the last right. match? I don't even know. Like Goodness that's, sakes. Remember, remember, this hand was three lands, mayhem, double, double claim. And yep. so all of a sudden it's like, okay, well, I need to draw a sacrifice, sacrifice outlet. Okay, did. And it's like, okay, well, I have step one kind of down. So now I just kind of need a little something more. It's like, okay, well, cat's perfect. And it's perfect in combination with this. So it's like, yes. those are the perfect draw steps. Yeah, now, now Nassif's going to get a little bit blindsided here. Frexian Tower in to claim the Firstborn will be able to make sure this Devil doesn't stay on the battlefield. But boy, he can't complain about those draw steps, can he? No, not at all. Not at all. Now I'm excited to see what the next one's going to be. Yeah, I'm curious too. Hey, I'll say I'm... Another Go Mayhem Devil? I'm just, oh, no, Marshall. If we're going to dream, we got to dream big, buddy. Collected okay. Company. Oh, two Mayhem, mayhem Devils. Devils. Where are you? I get you. I get you. I get you. I didn't think big enough. If we're going to be greedy, be greedy. All right, okay, this, is easy. This, is, this is the easy yeah. stuff. This is, this is the fun stuff here. Get rid of your board. Sure. Of note here, there is no food or way to make it currently for David Steinberg. So those Calder Familiars will be stuck in the yard, at least for this foreseeable future. But once again, <clears throat> claim the firstborn with Phyrexian Tower will be fine here. Yeah. He even gets to hit him with it too, which you don't always see. But that is kind of all he gets to do here, right? Yes, yeah, his, his hand is weak. Land, land, and another claim. He's going to need some way to get the food roll in there for the Cauldron Familiars. David has a lot to do, but I have to say, looking down at Gabe Nassif's hand, he does have the Cauldron Familiar Witches Oven thing going, which is nice. But Steinberg's at 20. That 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 isn't going to be the way that he wins the game. Oh, oh wow. Boy. Scavenging ooze. And he even has e two boy. extra green mana sources here that he can use to just gobble up all the cats and oh you saw a little flinch there from steinberg he knows what a big deal this is yeah so what this is going to do is it's going to take care of both oh. of the cats now worth mentioning that steinberg does have an answer to claim take that sacrifice to the phyrexian tower so what we saw last turn with the mayhem devil but it, it, it this is a temporary solution to what something that could have become a problem down the road now overgrown tomb again less than ideal so now Steinberg's going to make the predictable one there of claim, as I mentioned just a second ago. Right. Uh, and you'll see this get sacrificed. Yep. Yeah. So what I'll say is this, Marshall, if we're trying to predict big draws. Collected Company on the Seif side, uh, and now would be a really good time to draw Corvold if I'm uh, if I'm David Steinberg. And it's starting to look like Steinberg's going to need a couple of really big draws in a row to even get back into this game. As once again, Nassif isn't quite in slam the door on you mode, right? He's still just pecking away with these cauldron familiars. He's still got a couple of claim the firstborns in hand with no target. And now he's going to put Gigant of the Wellspring in hand. But it, the door will close very quickly on Steinberg if he can't find something uh, next turn. Yeah, if, if Nassif finds something like a Midnight Reaper or something, this game almost certainly ends. Gilded Goose is not what the Doctor order either. Again, Steinberg, if I'm him, I'm just hoping... Corvold, Corvold, where are you? I need to draw one right now because Nassif is floundering, but that could turn around with one draw step. How about Giganta the Wellspring for the win? Ah, the big fella! <laughs> I mean, we very well may be looking at that. There, yeah. The Night Reaper there. Mm -hmm. Not quite enough for the Giganta the Wellspring, but uh, Midnight Reaper, we saw what a powerful addition this is in the prior game where it really 
propel Gabriel to the victory, and that may do the same thing here. Reaper is an insane draw. Yeah. Just an insane draw. Nassif is drawing really well. Yeah. <laughs> he has found everything he needed off the top of the library at every juncture. Now it's like there are no bad top decks for him at this point. A land lets him get Gigantha. Well, there's a Mayhem Devil now for Steinberg. All right, so this is interesting because Mayhem Devil is like the, was like the one card that could like undo this a little bit because if we you get the triggers from the sacrificing. Right. So we're going to see in response here from by Nassif, he's going to do some sacrificing before Mayhem Devil is actually on the battlefield. But once Mayhem Devil is actually on the battlefield, you'll get some triggers and stuff. But this is not going to last all that long because you see the claim the Firstborn in Nassif's hand. He's got the answer to the Mayhem Devil right now. And the window for Steinberg to actually draw a Corvold, uh, it's closing. One could argue that it's already closed um, right now, but if it's not next turn, it's not going to be soon enough. Right, I agree. And, and that's the tough part is that we're starting to get into the territory where even if he draws the Corvold, it still depends on Gabriel Nassif not drawing a bunch of cards, you know, a bunch of specific things, basically spells of any sort from his library. Mm -hmm. And that is going to be extremely difficult. Here comes Claim the Firstborn on Mayhem Devil. David Steinberg, not a whole lot he can do here. He's going to sacrifice food. That's going to let him ping. Then he can use the tower to sacrifice the devil. That'll let him finish off the reaper. But again, Nassif has another one in hand as well Duh. as a card coming into hand here from the <laughs> reaper. And it just never ends for Steinberg. He is doing every single thing that he can to fight what Nassif is doing. But Nassif is simply overwhelming him at this point. Yeah, he really, really is. I mean, Nassif found reaper at the perfect time. And now he has another one at the perfect time. And Horvald, it needs to be you right now. <laughs> Where are you, big dragon? No, oh, and it's a forest. And all Steinberg can do is smile because he knows that that is really the nails in the coffin here for his match against Gabriel Nassif. He needed something here, and Nassif just shakes his head because he knows what it's like to be on the other side of that match. Nassif is a, a player who's played so much magic in his day that he's not the type to say, Oh yeah, baby, you drew a forest. He goes, I know how that feels. I've been there before, but also he's a pro player and he's gonna get the job done here uh, to, to finish off David Steinberg. But still it is one of those things where, you know, everybody knows what it feels like to be on the bad end of this, where you just can't seem to get anything to line up for you. And there it is, Jagantha the Wellspring on the battlefield here, ready to finish off David Steinberg. Liliana's defeat certainly not gonna be enough here. Yeah, you got to think about how Steinberg was able to win the game that he was able to win in this matchup. Think about the key cards that showed up. Trail of Crumbs was able to show up early, bridge the gap, find what he was looking for, and then Corval was able to finish it in one swift attack. 